All right, we're looking at this proof for homework and it's giving us the following. Remember that we're gonna always start with the givens and then go from there to see what we have. This time you're doing a paragraph proof and we're talking about this new one called a flow chart or diagram proof. So let's go see what we would start with. We are given angle A is congruent to angle C and angle BDA is congruent to angle DBC from the quadrilateral ABCD. We know that BD is congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. So at this point, you want to go ahead and mark what you definitely have on the diagram so you can visualize it. So A and C are congruent. B, D, A is congruent to D, B, C. And then that reflexive side right there in the middle. So do we have enough for triangle congruency? Yeah, we have angle, angle, side. So now that we have three congruent parts, triangle ABD and triangle CDB are congruent by angle, angle, side. Since the triangles are congruent, then all other corresponding parts are congruent. Therefore, we can say our proof statement of AB is congruent to CD. And our proof is done. Now, how would I apply this into a flow chart or diagram proof here to the side? So we start with the top information, the givens. Angle A is congruent to angle C, given. Angle BDA is congruent to angle DBC, given. And BD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So you have one, two, three things before you can prove your triangle congruency. Now we have those three things, we can say the triangles are congruent. So we say this part, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB by AAS and then we can go to our final proof statement. AB is congruent to CD by CPCTC. So remember that at the end of our proof, this thing that we're trying to prove should always be last in whatever format of the proof that we're doing. Okay, at this point, pause the video and try the next one on your own. Let's see how you do. Okay, so B is the midpoint of A, E, and C, D. So we're, we know that this is a given. And then from that, we can say that A, B is congruent to E, B by definition of midpoint. We can also say that D, B is congruent to C, B also by definition of midpoint. And so mark this right here and this right here. And then do you see the final thing that we're supposed to see in that picture? These vertical angles. Angle ABD is congruent to angle EBC by vertical angles are equal or vertical angle theorem. Okay, we have our three parts now. So now we can say the triangles are congruent. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle EBC. And this is by side, angle, side. And then finally, we can say that the part is congruent by CPCTC. Remember that whatever we end with right here needs to be what we end with at, in the proof. Okay, we're going to write a paragraph of this in our own words. So I don't know which one you like to start with. Do you want to start with the paragraph and then go to the flow chart? Do you want to start with the flow chart and then go to the paragraph? Uh, in this one, I did it backwards so you can see. But so looking up here as a format, we are given that B is the midpoint of AE and CD. by definition of midpoint
we know that this gives us AB is congruent to EB and DB is congruent to CB. That's by definition of midpoint. Also, we see that angle ABD is congruent to angle EBC by vertical angle theorem. Now that we have three congruent parts, we can say triangle ABD is congruent to triangle EBC by side angle side. So we know that AD is congruent to EC since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.